some inside production out of Henderson, Cornette, Siak, um, those guys have to score in the block. They're ready to get things underway. Providence out of the newly formed Big East Conference and Vanderbilt. Joe Lindsay, Jeff Clark, and Brian Shea, the trio officiating this game, and Providence in the black uniforms will take over possession first as Bryce Cotton, lead, the reigning Big East scoring champion with possession. Cotton at 20 points per game this season for the Friars. There's Fortune letting fly way off, and the rebound taken down by Henton. Now the junkyard dog got his first offensive rebound, is hitting when they're in battle, but Providence not able to convert. There's Dejon Parker dropping it off on the baseline. Commodore's ball. Underneath the jump hook by Siakam, and he puts it through. Vanderbilt has the own version of the junkyard dog as Siakam is very effective inside. A little bit undersized, as is Hinton, but very effective. A spot in the lineup open for Siakam when Kevin Bright, who was their starting three guy last season, went to go play pro in Germany after just one year. And then the shot buried on the opposite side by Hinton makes it a 2-2 score. Well, Hinton is a difficult matchup because he can score the block, he can step out and shoot the three ball, has great range, left-handed, always gives him an advantage. There's Damian Jones is quickly coming on as a freshman, no good. Siakam there with another jump hook, and it's James Siakam for Providence 2. Providence has to get their body on people. The same with Vanderbilt. You don't want to give up second chance opportunities. Fortune will drop it off to Cotton, the senior from Tucson, Arizona. You're going to see Cotton at that point guard position. Straight away jumper is good. And Kadeem Batts, who is the co most improved player in the Big East a season ago with Michael Carter Williams of Syracuse, now with the Sixers in the NBA. Batts has had a, a great start to the season, averaging. 15 and over eight rebounds for Providence. McClellan, who reached a new career high number with 29 in his last game. And a violation in Vanderbilt, and they'll turn it over. Damon Jones trying to post up on that weak side block. Had his socks in the box a little bit too long. Three second call. Jones before that miss on the previous possession is 12 for 16 coming into the tournament from the floor. Now Providence Cotton, basketball. Cotton's going to play that point guard position until they bring in Chris Dunn. And Cotton nails the three pointer and he's off and running. Seven for Providence. Cotton averaging 20 points per game but also dishing out seven assists per game. These are two defenses that really pride themselves on that half court and making stops. Ball screen defense was huge. And it's stripped from the top by McC McClellan loses it. Here's Cotton down underneath Tyler Harris, the NC State transfer. Put up no, tap second time. That won't go despite the best efforts of Bats, who lives up to his name, but he batted it over the rim. Here's Odom off balance. And Vanderbilt getting a little sloppy, and now a foul will be called. Well, two trips in a row, you've seen Vanderbilt with a ball screen on the wing. Providence really prepared for that in their practice yesterday. And what did Kevin Stallings tell us yesterday, Kevin? He said, now defense is so crucial. They came into this game last among the 14 SEC teams and allowing 78 points per game through their first three games this year. They had a great battle against Butler. We're down at half and battled their way back into that game, put it into overtime, but lost at Butler. There's McClellan, the jump pass underneath. One dribble going up and getting fouled is Damian Jones. Well, Jones was coming off the bench, averaging 11 and a half a game, rewarded tonight with a start, and he's been very, very productive. McClellan, open court, finds the big man running. We spoke to Kevin Stallings a week ago, and he said Jones could probably crack the starting lineup sometime this season. That sometime is the fourth game of the year, the fourth game of his freshman campaign. He hits the free throw and is now 12 of 20 on the season. Junior from Baton Rouge, or freshman from Baton Rouge. Well, he's been very effective from the field, shooting 75% coming this game. Started off 9 for 10 in their first two games. Rebound to Bats, and it's seven to five. We got a quick start here in comparison with our previous game. 
which Maryland defeated Maris. Here's Harris along the baseline, and the bounce pass cross court taken away by McClellan. And the former Golden Hurricane comes up the floor like a hurricane and well, we, puts a throw. We talked about it. You have to get in front of McClellan because he can go wire to wire. You have to meet him at a point of attack and get him to turn that way straight line to the basket. McClellan like Cotton averaging 20 a game this season. Right wing three from Cotton. That off the back rim. Not shy about shooting in the early minutes. And a foul underneath, and it will be going back the other end. We've got a good one so far, folks. It's seven for Providence, seven for Vanderbilt. Stick with us here on CBS Sports Network. First stop on the road to the Final Four. Last year, New Mexico came in and won the tournament, Steve Alford. And they had a great season, although they're upset in the tournament. And all but two of the champions since this tournament came into being for the men in 2001 have advanced to the NCAA tournament. Of course, New Mexico didn't have a fun time last year with Harvard in the, their first game of the NCAAs. See how this one shapes up. Seven to seven is the score. Siakam, the Cameroonian in the lane, operating, falling down, but he traveled. Now, Chris Dunn still on the bench. Oh, here he comes. He's entering the game right now. That'll move Cotton to that two-guard spot. Fortune will yield, and Dunn comes in. Dunn, as we talked about, had eight assists in his first game. That was against Butler. 21 minutes, missed the first couple of games with a shoulder injury, which cost him nine games to start the season last year. Kristen is a high-energy person as they post inside the left-hander. Tyler Harris, 6'9". You see him along the three-point line quite a bit. Little set play here as they block the block screen. Harris able to complete at the line now, the three-point play. Harris, the native of Dix Hills, New York, transferred from NC State. And Carson DeRosia coming in, and he'll take out Kadeem Batts. Harris, whose brother Tobias played at Tennessee and was drafted by Charlotte Bobcats, now plays with the Orlando Magic. Can't convert on the free throw, and it's 9-7 to seven Providence. And DeRosia, uh, the transfer from Wake Forest, gives another big man as McClellan drains that ball away. McClellan, such a huge key, especially after Kedron Johnson was the leading scorer last year, and the starting point guard for Kevin Stallings was suspended for violating university policy for the entire season. That coupled with the departure of Kevin Bright kind of changed things up for the Commodores this season. Here's Harris to Cotton, 10 on the shot clock. Poked away in the backcourt. It's picked up by Dejon Parker and put through. Another great play by Dejon Parker. Stuck his mitts in there. Cotton, a little loose with the basketball. Both these squads do an excellent job of floor spacing. Get the ball to the weak side. This is what we call the second side. Harris uncorks the three. No, battle among the big men. DeRosia and Josh Henderson for Vanderbilt. It's out of bounds. And it will stay in possession of Providence, but Dejon Parker with a big defensive play, Kevin. Well, Cotton gets a little loose with it. It's difficult to reach in because of the new rules, but Dejon Parker, excellent steal, converts it to an easy two points for Vanderbilt. Chris Dunn, sophomore from New London, Connecticut, inbounding, and Henton will give back, and here's Dunn running the point for the first time today. Double high screen. Dunn will pull up for three, and that's off the back rim. And a steal in the backcourt and an easy hoop for Harris. A great awareness by Harris. Jump the passing lane. He's getting easy two, just as we saw Parker do it for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt averaging 13 turnovers a game, a high amount. Seeking to turn around here. They're two games in, and they're two and one. 19 turnovers in their loss at Butler. That's something Kevin Stallings wanted to clean up. Oh, and DeRosa thought he had a clean block. Instead, it will give two free throws to Rod Odom. And Ed Cooley wanted to make Odom a driver. Watch this. Boy, just snuck in there. Great move and Her Tyler Harris. Harris pulled a Dejon Parker right there. And Odom to the line, and it's off the back rim. Odom a... 4-4-7 on the season. And a 
Dante Henton will come out, bats back in. And Barroja, as we mentioned, the Wake Forest transfer from Wyndham, New Hampshire. Had a couple of years for the Demon Deacons. Second free throw is good. And it makes it a 12 to 11 score in favor of the Commodores out of the SEC. Now a little of a three quarter court pressure to use some time off the clock by Vanderbilt. They're a long team. They can do some pressing. There's Dunn giving it out to Cotton for three. And that rolls out. Rebound underneath taken by Vanderbilt. And it's Luke Cornett. Down the floor, storming Fuller, who's back in, and his pass tipped away. But Cornett is an interesting story for Vanderbilt. He's grown 10 inches since he ended high school. He was not given a scholarship up until April of his senior year. He grew eight inches over the course of that span, and then two inches once he came onto campus, and now clocks in at seven feet tall. Well, Kevin Stolle said when he come into practice, they look at him, they think he's grown a quarter inch since yesterday's <laughs> practice. His father, Frank, was a great player for Vandy yeah. back in 86 through 89. Played with the Milwaukee Bucks for a couple of years, too. Cotton out for the first time today, and Josh Fortune replacing him. Luke Cornett has three-point range also at seven foot one. Nice stroke. And McClellan has it with Fuller, Cornett, Henderson, and Odom as the five for the Commodores in the white. The outlet to Odom for three, and he cans it. Ed Cooley will not be happy with that. He wanted to make Odom a driver. Get to him. They said, you have to shade him closer, make him bounce. Don't let him spot up and splash in the three ball. And trying to match is Harris. And it's flagged down by Odom. But Vanderbilt comes in at 42% from long range. They can hit him. And they have. Here's McClellan. Well, they're very good offensively shooting the basketball. They have to clean up their turnovers, become more efficient. Cornette rises and fires. DeRosha battling with his own teammate. Nearly took it away from Bats. And nearly turned it over as a process. And here's Dunn. And Dunn is a point guard who would rather pass than shoot. But we see some zone action here from Vanderbilt. Here's Harris, matchup with Fuller. Done thinking about the three. And not a bad move with Cotton on the bench to show a little zone. Odom with seven on the clock, shoots and scores. Bats, or bats is rather. extremely effective from that mid-range. That 17-footer, he is deadly. The bat cancels in the two and makes it a 15-13 Vanderbilt score. Here's McClellan, wide open as Cornette. And both teams not being shy about shooting the three in the early goings. 11.49 to go in the first half. Done to Fortune and a foul call. 15 to 13, Vanderbilt on top with 11.42 to go in the first half. University of the Virgin Islands Sports and Fitness Center home to the Paradise Jam. Coming back to the CBS Sports Network. We've had a very active first half of play. 15 to 13 is the score in favor of Vanderbilt. But Kevin, we've seen a lot of three-pointer shots so far. 11 between the two teams. And Vanderbilt has come out on fire. Six for nine overall. They've used that side ball screen and some pick and pops to get some good looks for Odom. You've got McClellan two for two and Siakiam also two for two. Only the second ever meeting between these two teams. Providence lost to Vanderbilt 72-66. Back in a, a tournament in 1998. Surprising, seeing the profile of these two conferences, but as it is, it's the first meeting in 15 years. Over on the far side, Fuller going up on DeRozan, putting it in. Well, Providence wanted to ice those ball screens and not let the man come over. That time, Fuller turns back, does not use the ball screen, just a free lane to the basket for an easy two. Henton and Dunn exchanging possession, along with Cotton, DeRosia, and Bats. They're five for the Friars. Picked to finish sixth in the preseason Big East poll. On the right wing, the three rolls out. Tough break. And Vanderbilt running the break on the opposite side with McClellan on the left wing. Well, the zone's been very effective for Vanderbilt. They've moved Henton to the province and moved him out to the three spot. The shot not there for Vanderbilt. And up the floor, Dunn! Finding bats in stride, but he can't hang on. May have injured his ankle as he tried to make the catch. Let's check it out again. Dunn had a well-placed pass. 
And that ankle just slid on the court, and that's very painful. Bass not able to catch and convert that left ankle. Ouch. Just walking it off there. I think he's good to go. We'll see if Vanderbilt tries to attack him. Backdoor cut, and McClellan goes up. Denied by DeRosia twice on the play. Here comes Dunn down the lane, gives it off to Bats, puts it up, can't get it to go. But the defense by DeRosia, who is currently leading the Big East in blocks, and now he's got 13 on the season. DeRosia has really made his presence felt as he come off the bench, gave a huge lift. Good time, he gets a piece of it, stays in there, blocks it, keeps it inbounds to his teammate. Now Bats trying to convert at the other end at the free throw line. Those two ACC transfers between DeRosia and Harris, huge Providence this season. And the score there on the free throw by Bats. Bats came in 11 for 12. Now this is one key for Providence. They come into tonight the Big East best free throw shooting team over 82%. That's got to make Ed Cooley happy. It's not there in the second go around, however. And it is 17-14, the Commodores by three. Another ball screen on the side, but McClellan refuses. And another three in the key. It's the second time we've seen that call against Vanderbilt tonight. Well, Vanderbilt has that ball screen on the strong side, and they have a postman ducking in on the weak side, waiting for that ball to come back around. We already has owned some real estate, but twice charged with a three-second violation on that play. Vanderbilt having some success with the zone. Cotton cannot get loose on the baseline. And the paint. And it's Bath going to the hoop, can't get it to go, and he'll get right back to the foul line on the foul against Vanderbilt. And that will go again, so it'll be the second foul on Damian Jones. Look for Bath to be very effective right below the free throw line in that zone. There's always a hole in the zone below the free throw line. Bath, an excellent shooter in that 12 to 17 foot range. You see what Bats has done this season, and when he had that most improved player year last year, put up similar numbers, just under 15 points per game, about seven rebounds per game. Providence still unable to draw any closer. Odom checks back in, as does Henderson for Vanderbilt. You know, the Friars at 4-0 trying to go to 5-0 for the first time since Rick Barnes coached the team during the 90-91 season. A long time since the Friars have enjoyed this good a start. They trail by two to Vanderbilt. And of course, Rick Barnes at the University of Texas coaching the Longhorns now. Having trouble with the entry. Henderson, here's Siakam, drives around, bats, goes up, but can't get it to go on the dunk. And DeRosia may have gotten a piece. DeRosia's made his presence felt. Siakam tries to do a little one-on-one -on -one as that side is cleared out. And we got another three seconds. That is three in one game, and we are just over 10 minutes into this game. I've not seen that many three-second goals. And we do have the trapezoid lane here. Yeah. And that's the real old-school international rules. They don't have that anymore in international rules. The lane is very similar to that of the NBA. And obviously, these officials are not calling them three seconds in the trapezoid area of it. But it is painted that way on the floor. Here's Siakam going, getting inside among the trees, and Siakam puts it in. Siakam going right to the rim. Established position, set call in transition by Kevin Stallings. Providence basketball, Bryce Cotton is the fifth ever Friar to lead the Big East in scoring, first since Marshawn Brooks. Vanderbilt had great success in the zone. Now they've gone back to man to man. Under nine minutes to go in the first half. Cotton will hand off. Henton back to DeRosia. The three off the back rim. Providence has shot that three a lot tonight, but they have not made too many. It's the one make so far. Here's Fuller. Senior from Moreno Valley, California. Fuller, the mid-range jumper, and it's no good from 12. DeRosia grabs the offensive rebound and a fresh 35 for the Commodores. Side to side ball movement, get some penetration. Fuller, the reverse, or sent away by DeRosia. 
DeRosia has really been a presence inside defensively. Makes a great read, hands up high. Makes the attempt to keep it in bounds. Foot in the chest there. So Fuller as he goes down. Dropped off nicely to McClellan. He can't get it to go. With the long arms of McClellan, he knocks it out of bounds. And Ed Cooley not happy because that is a play they have had on the scouting report. Vanderbilt likes to go right back to the inbounder if you zone their OB underplays. Tottenham has been very quiet here this first half. As McClellan is just locked on to number 11. Here's Cotton, the dribble drive. He kicks it out on the wing. And the shot is drilled by Henton. Long dry spell for Providence and a much needed drink of water as Hinton drills that three. McClellan, the Austin, Texas native, roams over to the left side. Matched up with Fortune. Turnaround jump hook for Henderson, crawls off the rim. Bats the rebound. Here's a long three from Fortune and that rolls out and Henderson and Vanderbilt trying to pick up the pace now. Goes McClellan for the deuce. That's what McClellan does. Wire to wire, fast as any player in America. You have got to meet him early and get him to change direction, and he will explode right to the rim. Commodore ball or make a Providence basketball, and it's tipped away on the pass off by Cotton, and Siakam has it. The Tulsa transfer, McClellan to Fuller, the runner off glass, and that goes through. And that play was made because of McClellan's ability to, to go in in with speed. The entire defense from Providence tried to get in front of him and open up Fuller for the drive. Harris after a very eventful pass off. And Cotton getting his cues from Ed Cooley over on the far sideline. Earlier this year was Big East Player of the Week after dropping 28 in the season opener, a win in overtime against Boston College. One time Big East member, now ACC. Shot off the back rim, that won't go for bats. Under six minutes to go, it's a five point game in Vanderbilt's favor. Here's Siakam and he travels. And it will lead to a break in the action. Siakam turns it over for the Commodores, who have led for much in the first half of play. Vanderbilt 23, Providence 18. Back with more action. CBS Sports Network right after this. The Commodores leading it by five. They made only one start a season ago, taking advantage. 18 points, 13 boards against Lipscomb for his first career double-double. Now let's go down to Monica Jonigan. Thanks, guys. Coming out of that timeout, Coach Darling telling his team in the huddle he was very pleased with the last four minutes of production, but he said we got to stay strong on defense and keep rebounding. That was the focus of the huddle there, guys. Thanks, Monica. Stallings has mentioned just recently become the all-time wins leader at Vanderbilt with 279 now in his career, 15th season. Cotton almost went up. Harris. Feeds it underneath, Henton under pressure. And it looks like Providence is gonna be called for a foul, and it's going to be Kadeem Bass. This is a long Vanderbilt team there in that zone with the big wings. Odom at six foot nine, Henderson inside, 6'11", taking up a lot of space, has really gave Providence some challenges trying to find open shots. Nearly thrown away by Odom. Here's Henderson, who'll move it back out. Just over five minutes to go. Commodores with the ball, shooting 48%, but turning it over as Henderson now gives it away for the eighth turnover of the half. Well, that's been the problem for Vanderbilt. They come in shooting the ball 52% from the field, but they have turned the ball over way too many times for Coach Stalling. Pick and roll. You see the Open turnover, inside. See the turnover situation. Eight for Vanderbilt, six for Providence. Head fake Cotton. Henton. Nice pass whipped by Dunn. Harris to the move. On the move to the hoop. No. And Parker is thrown down by Harris. That'll be the fifth foul on Providence. 
Vanderbilt has the same sky report against Harris that the Providence has against Odom. Make him a dribbler. Do not give him the standstill jumper. As Harris tries to drive in there, has gotten himself in trouble a couple times. Not able to finish off the drive for the sophomore, Tyler Harris. Vanderbilt basketball, 17 losses a season ago go when they went 16 and 17. Most losses since the 2002-2003 season. Well, that run three years in a row were NCAA tournaments, McClellan. Nice move by the transfer, the first year Commodore. Makes it a 25-18 score, now done on the other end. Those two guys are tremendous wire-to-wire -wire speed has done. Takes it right to the rack. Well, you and I saw Dunn at practice yesterday, Kevin, and he took one dribble and made it to the hoop, blew by all the defenders in his way. Very Riddle long one four set where you're hoping to see that here in the first half. And contact underneath, just as we expected, a very physical first half. And once again, the foul. And it's going to be called on Vanderbilt's Shelby Modes. Well, look at Dunn driving down the lane, Kevin. This little change of direction and shifts into high gear as Dunn finishes. And we mentioned now he's been out with a bad shoulder, dislocated his shoulders. This is only his second game back. Still a, bit, a little rust on Chris Dunn's game, but great passing by that young man. 16 of the 25 points for Vanderbilt. Points in the paint so far. 350 to go. Cotton. Trying to slip it inside of DeRosia. There's Dunn taking on all comers. You can see his confidence just begins to grow. You see, in the first game, had a number of assists, but didn't shoot it well. But finding the range and the ability to slice and dice through the defense. Odom will rise from three, and that one rattles home. Well, you get caught. Watch the paint dry in that play. We'll close the gate. Odom came through the double screen. We watched him work on that in practice. Odom a three, top of the key. Wow, Odom came in with a 57% three-point shooting percentage. Yeah, that will work. And a six foot nine, again, like Jake Lehman we saw in the game from Maryland. Hard to get to that jump shot. Kind of in the story in this tournament, a lot of guys, you look at their size playing different positions than you would normally expect. Makes tough matchups for you on defense. There's Motes will fire the three, and he has it rattle out, but Odom tracks down the rebound. Well, Vanderbilt has run that side screen and roll about 80% of their possessions, and Providence has struggled to defend it. McClellan working a little clock here as he roams to the right. Henderson a step inside the three-point arc, and he holds up the follow-through. 30 to 22, Vanderbilt opening up an eight-point lead. And what did it start with? Side pick and roll. As Henderson will pick and pop action for the big man. On the opposite side, Cotton can't get the three to go, and reeling it in is Dejon Parker from the foul line, and Motes will back it out. One dribble underneath the jump hook for Odom. That's not there. Odom, a 16-point per game average coming in. Cotton, one for seven for Providence. He has to get untracked for Take, Friars to be successful. Takeaway from McClellan. Lobs it up into the air, put up, and a foul will be called. Dunn trying to defend Odom, and it will send Vanderbilt to the line for two free throws. All expenses paid. 30 to 22, Vanderbilt on top. The Easy Bonds Paradise Jam here on CBS Sports Network. UVI is closer than you think. At UVI, the beach is closer than you think. At UVI, the professors are closer than you think. At UVI, your success is closer than you think. The University of the Virgin Islands is closer than you think. Call us today or visit our website.
now playing on DirecTV Cinema. American dream has been hijacked by men who are willing to lie, cheat, and steal to protect their wealth. It's all ours. And these people are everywhere. You think they get away with this? <laughs> what are we gonna do about it? We're gonna use what they taught me to destroy what they built. The kid knows too much. You're not as smart as you think you are. Movies start at channel 125. This is gonna be a hellacious war. Pacquiao, Rios, the two most explosive fighters in the world collide. There's nowhere else in sport you'll find greater sheer guts than what these two guys are showing you. This is boxing at its best. Two of boxing's biggest stars clash live. Pacquiao versus Rios. Saturday, November 23rd, live on Direct TV Pay Per View. Attention hip replacement patients. Striker Orthopedics has voluntarily recalled their Rejuvenate and ABG2 hip implants. If one of these striker products was used in your hip replacement, you may be entitled to compensation. These striker products may cause pain, swelling, or other complications. If one of these striker products was used in your hip replacement surgery, or if you're unsure which product was used, call us now. Call 1-800-676-7513 now for your free legal consultation. Again, that's 1-800-676-7513. Back with you, Vanderbilt by 8 at the Easy Bonds Paradise Jam 2013 edition. Remember, tomorrow's conversations start tonight. Get the latest word in sports on leadoff with Doug Gottlieb and guest host Tony Luffman tonight at midnight Eastern, only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Well, Vanderbilt leading right now over Providence College, 30 to 22. You see Kevin Stallings in the middle of your screen. You mentioned his prowess on the coaching sidelines. Interesting story, just a few years ago, he picked up the guitar and was taught the guitar by Tom Ledden. Now, if the last name sounds familiar, Tom's brother, Bernie, was a founding member of the Eagles. Now, Bernie lives in Nashville, which is where Vanderbilt is located. But it's kind of a little interesting thing, and he says, Kevin Stallings says, well, his favorite song to play is, no, no surprise, Tequila Sunrise, an Eagles song. Right in the heart of Music City. Yep. Kevin Stallings cut his teeth playing for Gene Cady at Purdue. The free throw by Odom is good, and let's send it now to Monica Jonigan. Guys, Coach Cooley in the huddle telling his guys to calm down. You're fine, but they're killing us in transition. They have got to get up and down the floor. And on offense, he's really looking for them to pound the ball down low and get some easy scores. Guys. Thanks, Monica. One thing I love about Ed Cooley, Kevin, and you'll appreciate this too, having spoken with him, is he doesn't uh, the mince words. He shoots straight from the hip right there. And he kept telling me, I really like my team to see Fortune knock that in. Fortune getting on the board. And it's 31-24, Vanderbilt by seven. And the weave up top to Parker. And there's Moats. Vanderbilt ball a lot, doing a lot of their work tonight in the paint, which is where Henderson fakes out the defender, DeRosia, but the tip not there for Odom. Oh. Henderson had DeRosia going the on wrong way. Odom can find it unchecked, but not able to convert. Cotton very quiet in this game. Fortune for three short, and it's not fallen for the Friars tonight. Well, the Friars are shooting the ball a little quick. You can see Vanderbilt a little side to side, but they were trying to get a two for one on that possession as there is a 12 second difference on the shot clock and the game clock. And a timeout will be utilized by the Commodores, but this is the first of two big SEC games for Providence in just a few weeks time. They got Kentucky coming up. And that certainly will be an interesting test as well for Ed Cooley's team taking on Julius Randle, the six McDonald's All-Americans. It's not an easy going playing in the SEC at any stretch. Of course, Vanderbilt's going to run into Kentucky also in the league play. Yeah. We asked Ed Cooley about that Kentucky game. He looked at it and said, I'm worried about Vanderbilt. Yeah. Kentucky was not even on the radar. <laughs> well, Providence. As we mentioned, the Big East, very much a different iteration than what you've seen in years past. Syracuse, Pitt, Notre Dame, Louisville, all gone. Yukon, Rutgers, Cincy, South Florida, all disappear. The new entrance, as you know, Xavier Butler and Creighton, those three teams joining the conference. It's now a 10-team league. It's going to be a very much a different Big East when 
Those conference games start going in January. Yeah, Creighton picked third in that league, and surprisingly, this Providence team was picked sixth. I think that's a little low, but it's a very talented squad that Ed Cooley has. And now they're going to show a little zone here. We mentioned 12 second difference in the shot clock. As Vanderbilt's going to wind it down. And it's Kyle Fuller who goes into the corner. Whipped underneath perfectly to Odom, who's denied underneath. And Providence with the defense, LaDante Hinton, the junkyard dog with the rejection. Oh, nice set play by Vanderbilt against the zone, but denied by Providence. Let's check out the replay here. Three blocks for Providence in this game, the latest by Hinton. Well, they overloaded that side, brought Odom underneath on a little screen. Hinton was blocked but then he recovers and makes the stop. And defense right there, Providence. That's what Coach Cooley said coming into the tournament. Our season's going to hinge on the defense. And in the early going, his team has allowed only 61 points per game. But right now, their offense kind of stuttering and only 24 points to this first half of play against Vanderbilt, which one of their question marks was the 78 points per game and the 44% shooting they had allowed through the first three games this season. Their zone has been very effective with lots of length, and of course they have kept Cotton under control throughout this first half. Cotton just one for seven and one for six from the three-point line. Dunn will run the point, operating just inside midcourt with 10 seconds to go. Jump pass on the blocks, going up, no, but Bats getting himself back to the line. Well, Providence answers with almost a similar play against the zone where they're going to screen one of those baseline defenders in, run a cutter in from behind. Now, Bats able to get to the free throw and get some points out of this one where Vanderbilt was denied by the great block by Hinton. Josh Henderson getting his first foul. Well, Bats also earning Big East honorable mention with the season he had last season. 31-25 is the count. Now with 4.4 seconds, now remember McLennan can go wire to wire. So let's see if they deny him the inbounds pass. Bats with seven points, five boards tonight. Came in with three double-doubles in his last four games. So a couple of substitutions. Dejon Parker in for Vanderbilt. That's to stop the clock so they can double McLennan so he does not get a touch. Good move by Ed McLennan. Uh, Cooley with four seconds left. And it's inbounded to Henderson. Lee Goldsboro in for Providence. And Henderson will launch the three at the buzzer, but it's off the glass from about 35 feet out. And that's how the first half comes to an end. Vanderbilt 31, Providence 26. And in the first half of play, 43% shooting for the Commodores. Providence 2 of 15 from three-point range, but only trailing by five. They've really struggled against the zone in the three-point line. As we mentioned, uh, Cotton really struggling one for six. That's kind of been the storyline in the first game. The defense by Vanderbilt trading up zone and man-to-man. -man. Providence trying to keep alive an unblemished start to the season. Four and oh, looking to go five and oh for the first time in 22 years. Well, Vanderbilt two and one on the season, and we have Monica Jonigan down on the sideline. Coach, your team holding Providence to just 34% shooting in the first half. Give us a sense of how happy you are with that zone defense. Well, I was happy with our defense period. That's the best 20 minutes of, of defensive basketball that we've played this year. So, And you have to be because they're a very, very good offensive team. So uh, I, I felt good about the way we defended. The problem was we got the ball at the goal about four times, got our shot blocked. We had four layups that I think got blocked, and including that last possession. But, but nevertheless, we were we were pleased with how we played defensively. Even still, you have pretty even scoring throughout your starters. What are you going to do and tell your team in the second half to to come out and maintain this energy? Well, we just have to play defensively another 20 minutes, like we played that 20 minutes, and and that that's the key. If we rebound and, and play defensively like that, then we'll have a chance. Our our offense can keep us in the game, but but defensively is the key against these guys because, like I said. Said they're very, very good. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Guys, back to you. Coach Stalling says his team has played the best defense of the season. No arguments here against his second straight Big East opponent. It's been a good one so far, so stay with us. We head to the half with Vanderbilt leading Providence 31 to 26. A lot coming up, so stay with us here on the CBS Sports Network.
Well, looking at the stats, we mentioned the rebounding, 22 to 15, but look at the three-point shooting for the Providence Friars. Two of 15, a lot of turnovers, but as we talked about, Commodore 16 points in the paint, and keep in mind how well they play defensively. Vanderbilt was a team coming in at the bottom of the SEC in scoring defense and field goal percentage defense, and last in steals, but we'll see if they can carry over what we saw in the first half. The Commodores will get the ball to start this second period of play. The Friars have to get Bryce Cott involved in the offense. The leading score from the Big East last season is just one for seven and three points. Oh, Jones underneath and with authority puts it down. The freshman started the first half but then sat. But Kevin Stallings going back to the big freshman set play. Jones Easy had, basket. Jones had 19 points, went seven for eight in his debut in the victory over Georgia State. And we've got a foul underneath. That on Jones and immediately Henderson into the lineup. And you see Jones power underneath and here it is on full display. No answer for that by the Friars. So he plans to major in electrical engineering at Vanderbilt. On the other side, talk about electric. Tyler Harris has been it. Knocking down the three. That is the first one of the game for Tyler Harris as he has scored in other ways, but very dangerous weapon. Six foot nine left hander can rise up and knock it down from the arc. Along the baseline, Henderson the turnaround. Henderson comes right in. They get two quick points or two quick baskets, four points total in the paint again from Henderson as he comes in for Damian Jones who scores in the first possession. Fortune drives the lane, fortunately, has Cotton over on the wing. He'll use the bat screen, then make his way to the hoop. The floater won't go. And wrestling for the rebound, Siakam can't get it, and he'll stay in possession of the Providence College Friars. You can see frustration on the face of Bryce Cotton as he is now one for eight. He cannot get a basketball the size of Vanderbilt has really given Bryce Cotton some issues. Harris drops it off. Henton can't get it to go. And the rebound knocked away. Back to Harris, who loses it. And it will go back to the Commodores. Providence not very fortunate in the shooting end of things. Only 34% from the floor. They battle, but they're really out of sync at the offensive end. I think a lot of that has to do with Bryce Cotton. And they're used to getting points out of it. He's struggling. They're trying to find other ways to score from other players. Over in the blocks, Henderson has already surpassed the scoring average on the season. The jump hook, and why not go for more? He's got six in the game. Danny, great point. He has been very aggressive. In this game, Henderson did not get the start. They started the freshman, Damon Jones, but Josh Henderson has answered the bell as he's come in in relief. There's Cotton rising for three, and still the struggles for Cotton continue in this game. He's one for eight. Dejan Parker has locked on the Cotton, has not given him any space, has a little height advantage. You say Cotton listed 6'1", more like 5'11". McClellan fouled up top, and a push is going to be called against Josh Fortune. Checking out Josh Henderson, the redshirt junior from Roanoke, Virginia, but some nice moves in the paint. Well, that's a tough shot. You cannot defend it. A little bit of the Kareem Jabbar skyhook <laughs> by Henderson. Here's McClellan, and his entry pass, not a good one, taken by Henton. Here's Providence running the break. Henton all the way and puts it in, and it'll draw the foul. Well, they play Hinton at that four spot. But he has the ball skills of a perimeter player, so he's able to take that basketball and go all the way down, right down Main Street. Left-handers, always hard to guard. That's the 6-6 Henton getting to the line. And hit pretty short of the larger, taller Henderson, trace the contact, and we get the traditional three point play. Henton at over 17 points, just under 10 rebounds per game coming into tonight. And it's a five point score in Vanderbilt's favor. Here comes McClellan, a surge of speed, but is fouled again, and Fortune is having a tough time staying with McClellan. 
You've got to meet him. We said at the point of attacks or give him some ground because of the explosive speed of McClellan. And you get the feeling this game now, Providence has not played very well offensively, but they're still within five points. So that is a good sign for Providence. They, I, I haven't seen any really good flow at the offensive end by the Friars. Parker got it from Vanderbilt. Back to McClellan, but no, Chris Dunn gets in the way. He'll give it off, and Cotton lays it up and puts it through as well. And only the second field goal of the game by Cotton, and that made by Chris Dunn. Ed Cooley said Chris Dunn is the best defender in the Big East. You see those long arms, and they can get in the way of the passing lanes. Straight away, Odom fires a 24-footer, and he rattles it home. And we've seen that play before by Odom, where they set that that double screen. He sneaks through. He kind of lulls his man to sleep. And now we have a stoppage in the action. We got a little bit of a shootout at the USVI Corral right here, 40 to 34, Vanderbilt on top of Providence. Cotton able to get on the scoreboard, but it starts with a great steal by Chris Dunn, gets the two on one, and there's the delivery by Dunn to Cotton. Corner, three pointer not there for Henton. And there's Siakam on the baseline. Over on the opposite side, here comes Vanderbilt, Dejon Parker. McClellan inside the arc, and he'll bury it. Ed Cooley needs a timeout after that one. They, McClellan refused the screen and got that little 19-footer. The Tulsa transfers the first player of the night into double figure as Vanderbilt 42. He fired up in that timeout. He slammed his chair down and told his team they're getting open shot after open shot after open shot, and we are not taking advantage of it. He admonished his team for playing without the passion necessary, and uh, he's expecting them to come out and get fired up on both ends of the court. Guys. Well, you know, Ed Cooley has no problems in getting fired up. We saw that at practice. Here's Harris. The reverse, the putback, that goes. And Harris gets the bucket to go to make it a six-point game in Vanderbilt's favor. Vanderbilt shooting 50% from the field. That is what Ed Cooley is unhappy about. Just three for seven from the three-point line. They really focus on that, but they've given up some inside scoring. Odom can't get the 18-footer to go. The long rebound to Cotton, having trouble with the ball. Here's Harris. Down the lane, drops it off the bat. Rejected by Henderson. Providence, they've only three of 16 from three-point line. They've got to go inside more as they just did that last one. Henderson, Henderson, wow, on the jump hook and a three-point play opportunity. And don't tell him he can't score. Eight points and a chance to creep closer to his career high. Vanderbilt continuing to pour it on courtesy of Josh Henderson. Back with more from the Paradise Jam. Three games, he's got 10 points tonight, and he's only played. We've only played 15, uh, 15, uh, 25 minutes, excuse me, so far. Great production from those post players for Kevin Stallings is Henderson with eight points as he came off the bench. Of course, Damon Jones gave him a big lift, also. Ed Cooley's got to solve this inside outside game of Vanderbilt. They've really Pressure up the three-point line, but they're giving up a lot inside Henderson. Really showed he can score with that jump hook. It's only the third time at the line for Henderson, but he hits the second and three attempts, and he's only two points shy of his career high in scoring. Unlikely hero for Vanderbilt. Up by nine, 15 minutes to go. Providence 4-0 on the season, now facing the zone. And it's taken away by Bandy again, continuing that defensive prowess. Well, Dayton Jones, or Dayton Parker has been very quiet, but very effective for Vanderbilt, especially at the defense end. He is locked on to Bryce Cotton. Leading the break is Cotton. Nice pass to put it in. That was Henton to Cotton. Sometimes that run out helps get a player like Cotton, who's been struggling, gets him untracked. Here's McClellan, who transferred from Tulsa after Danny Manning took the job with the Golden Hurricane. Here's Henderson again, the Wonderkin. 
and a push in the back. This is what we talk about with the rules emphasis now in college basketball about the contact in the post, the hands in the back. And let's check it out again, that last play. Hinton to Cotton, check this out. Well, Hinton picks up the loose ball, and Cotton, great speed, just outruns the defense, gets an easy two. We'll see Ockham, the native of Douala, Cameroon, to Odom, who sinks the three. Odom squares his feet and shoulders up as good as any player I've seen this season. And at six foot nine, you cannot get there to contest the shot. He is having an excellent game for the Commodores. Odom sensational. He came in 57% three-point shooting. He's four of four from three-point tonight. And Ed Cooley said, well, you have to chase him off the three-point line. Make him a driver. There's the runner by Don. No, DeRosia can't hang on. And nothing going right for the Friars right now. Friars 38% from the field. They've really struggled to get quality looks at the basket. Great defense by Vanderbilt. Friars playing the zone, they have to deal with those ball screens. They keep McClellan on one side, but he goes underneath the basket. Underneath McClellan, the athletic move. Dejon Parker has made every small play. He's done a great job defensively. He's delivered the basketball on point, has not turned it over. Very impressed by his play. There's Cotton against this zone. Dunn slips it off to Harris. The jump hook, nope. And the rebound sealed off by Siakam. McClellan lob ahead to guess who? Henderson again. And Ed Cooley has seen enough as Henderson outruns his big man down the court. Now Josh Henderson now 13 points to tie his career high. Set last season when he did it three separate times. And Vanderbilt all of a sudden opening up a 14-point lead, Kevin. Certainly something that Providence did not see coming based on the way they started this season and based on what we saw about Vanderbilt's defense in the first three games this and year. Vanderbilt really struggled at Butler. As we said, they were down, but showed some moxie in a comeback to get that game into overtime as they were playing in Indianapolis. But I did not expect this either from either of these teams. This is a great defense. It's, there's McClellan finds a gap in the zone is or Odom and there's Parker delivering to McClellan. Well, as I said again, Dejon Parker has just played extremely well and Pearson just outruns the defense. That forced Ed Cooley to call a timeout and I don't think he was very happy. 50 to 38 the count, or 52-38 the count in favor of Vanderbilt right now. 10-2 run for Vandy. Let's see if Providence can answer, and they turn it over yet again, and then Providence answers in kind. And Dunn loses it. Providence has really struggled from the arc, so they're trying to get the ball inside that zone, and they've had problems because of the length of Vanderbilt to find passing lanes to the interior of the zone defense. The winner of this game will be back in action on Sunday here in CBS Sports Network, taking on the winner of the game coming up. Morgan State still looking for their first win against LaSalle. And now a takeaway for Dunn, and this will be an easy two. They'll dunk it in. A sophomore from New London, Connecticut. Excellent instincts as he read the passing lane, faked like he was going to go with his man, and then back out, tipped it loose. Maybe the spark that Providence needs to get back in this game. Cotton on the opposite side of the floor. Across midcourt to Odom. The ball move by Vanderbilt has been excellent. Their spacing goes from side to side. Ball movement and player movement. Difficult to guard. Parker around the rub by Henderson. Parker in the lane. Floats, fires, and scores. Again, Jay John Parker's been quiet, but he has had a great floor game. Starting to score a little bit now for Vanderbilt. He really looks like the general on the floor for this Vanderbilt team. He's directing traffic at the defensive end, making great plays and great decisions. Over in the corner, his fortune up, under, and denied by Cornette. Vanderbilt with two bigs in now, Cornette and Henderson. Fuller around the screen, drops it off, and now he's 
Blocked from behind by Henson. Cotton rises, and that won't go off the back rim. Put back by Dunn, no. Cotton trying to save it. Picked up by Dunn, goes up, and it's a herky-jerky exchange right there with Henderson grabbing the rebound. And they're just playing out there, folks. Fuller goes up, and in the face of DeRosia. And Dunn is down holding his shoulder, and that's not a good sign for Providence. No, dislocated that shoulder after having it injured in surgery a year ago. Well, plenty to be concerned about for Ed Cooley's Providence Friars. They're down 16, and Chris Dunn down and holding his shoulder again. Back with more, including an update when we return here at the Paradise Jam on CBS Sports Network. As the official hotel... Welcome back, hopefully, to alleviate some of the concerns for Providence. Chris Dunn standing, and looks like... He's good to go, but right now Providence has their own set of troubles on the scoreboard. Down by 16, Kevin, as Vanderbilt has taken that defensive first half we saw and has carried it over here into the second frame. And their offense has been extremely efficient. 11 of 14 here in the second half for 78% by Kevin Stallings' squad. They have been flawless at the offensive end. Providence on the floor with Henton, Cotton, DeRosia, Harris, and in the opposite corner, there's Harris and Fortune. There's the other of the five for Providence and a foul against Vanderbilt, and it will be going against Cornette. First on Cornette. And DeRosia trying to get some early post offense. Cornette trying to hold his real estate, called for a foul. Providence has not had an answer from this zone. They are three of 17, just 18% from beyond the arc. Fortune off the side of the back, with only 34% overall to make things worse. Here's Fuller. Well, when they've driven in the paint, they have run into a wall of length by the Vanderbilt Polsman, whether it's been Henderson, Jones, or Cornette. Shelby Motes back out on the floor for Vanderbilt. Odom, Cornette, Fuller, and McClellan round out their five. Under 10 minutes to go, there's Fuller. Gives it back out. No one wants to shoot here for Vandy. It's been great spacing. They have passed up some easy shots. McClellan goes into the teeth of the beast, and DeRosia knocks it away. In stride, Harris on Cornette. And a good body block. And the frustration evident for Providence. See, Harris wanted that shot to go, but it just won't go down for him. And late whistle. There's a few of the fans that are happy as Harris, body control, thought it was down, pops out, but now at the free throw line. Harris, who during the season transferring from NC State, where he had to sit out a year, misses the free throw, attended the LeBron James and Kevin Durant Skills Academy, certainly paying off. So there's Chris Dunn back in, a good sign for Vanderbilt. Or for uh, Providence, rather. And back to the line goes Harris. And done with surgery on his shoulder in July of 2012, then re-injured, dislocated November 2nd against Rhode Island in an exhibition game. So when he goes down and holds his shoulder, the Providence fans and coaching staff hold their breath. Fuller drives the paint, goes up on bats, and is going to be called for a charge. They're going to say he drove his shoulder right into the chest of bats. Well, we don't see as much anymore. Another emphasis, maybe he used his forearm to clear some space because they're really watching at the offensive player. Watch his right forearm. Yep, shoved him out. Offensive charge, you'll see that. In a charge call more than you see the block charge where the defensive player stays on the floor. In the corner, Cotton, foot on the line, can't, still cannot get it to go. But Cotton has had a forgettable night, three of 13. And he's had to rush all his shots. He's had a larger person on in his face. It's trouble getting squared up. Guy he's not in, had any good looks. Came in shooting 44%. 
Parker, open for three off the curl. Nope, DeRosia the rebound. And here's Dunn trying to run the break. Providence down 15, Dunn comes through and draws the foul. We see some similarities in the game of Dunn and McClellan as they both have excellent speed. Dunn just shifts into another gear. And we saw what Dunn at practice, he let him take that first step. And he's off to the races. Yeah, this young man who hasn't played for a number of weeks in his game the last time that the Friars played. So he's got a little rust in his game. They're trying to work him back into it slowly. He'll be an excellent player for the Friars this season in the Big East. He was in camp with the U19 team for the World's Championships in 2013. It's both free throws, making it a 13-point game. And now pressure in the backcourt by the Friars. So the Friars down 13. They've got to get something happening in this game because they have not been able to guard Vanderbilt in the half court. They tried some zone, they tried some man. The execution by Vanderbilt has been excellent at the offensive end. Odom runs out of room at the foul line. To McClellan, will set up shop. Jump pass, Henderson, head fake. Bumped by Bats. That'll be the fifth foul on Providence. McClellan draws so much attention on these ball screens. He's dragging two defenders with him. That's left Henderson open a number of times and some other players with all kind of keys off of McClellan and ball screens. Henderson spins and fouled again. Boy, he has been a feather in the craw for Providence all game long as Bats whistled yet again for now for his fourth foul. And Josh Henderson is he's a little chicken wing out there. Got away with it on bats. But you can see Josh Henderson's confidence has just risen as this game has gone on. Many times he would toss that ball back out, but he is being aggressive, attacking the basket when he catches. Bats at the sideline with just eight points on the night. McClellan back to Parker. They find Odom open for three. That's off the front rim. And the rebound is taken by Providence. The process was excellent. It's done. Up the floor quickly. Harris scores. First time tonight, Ted Bancroft in for the Friars. With Vanderbilt, last possession, great ball movement. Worked the shot clock, but not able to convert. But you got to like their process. Area, they got the. Defense spread, they're getting the ball in the high post against the zone, coming back to the weak side, they're gonna get some good looks. Friars trying to get it back, but Cornette grabs it. And it's Henderson jockeying for position, and he's got it. 30 feet from the hoop, he grabs the rebound, and that's gonna hurt Providence that much more as they have to work through another 35 second clock. No, Ed Cooley just looked away as that loose ball rebound went back to Vanderbilt, gives him another opportunity. Well, Providence is certainly a team that works well with adversity. Remember, they were 2-7 and seven in the Big East last year before they went 7-2 and two in their final nine. Second best ever turnaround in the Big East. Underneath, it's Bancroft going to the hoop, and he'll now get two foul shots. So Vanderbilt hanging on to an 11-point lead, but the Friars will have an opportunity after the break to cut that down even more. 6.34 to go at the Paradise Jam. The Friars trailing, needing more plays like these. Back with more in the CBS Sports Network. Vanderbilt hitting a three tonight. An interesting note that we came across going into this game, Kevin, they have now hit a three-pointer in 869 consecutive games. Only they, UNLV and Princeton, are the only teams to have hit a three in every single game since the three-point line was introduced in college basketball, what is it now, 27 years ago. 27 years, yes, 86th season. That is an amazing stat. And Danny, you were the only, only guy I know that would know that stat. <laughs> Providence has to be able to make some consecutive stops defensively to get back in this game. Multiple stops. Ed Cooley talked about that with his defense, that you have to be able to bear down and make those stops. 
They've got it down to 10, a chance to get to single digits with 6.34 left. At Bancroft, all his points have come at the line. He is three of four at the line this season. He actually grew up next door to, to Dave Gavitz, who's obviously a guy that's well known in Providence lore. Big East commissioner and was the head coach of the Providence Friars from 1969 through 79. In the corner, head fake, Odom. Mid-post jumper does not go, and a chance for Providence again now, down 10. Here's Cotton leading the charge. Dunn in the corner, three-pointer, DeRosia long. Bancroft gets his own rebound, another opportunity. Here's Harris, and that goes through, and look out, here come the Friars, a timeout is called. Yeah, it's a seven-point game. Stalley's not happy with his defensive effort because you got to take away the three ball. But that was made by Bancroft. Missed his shot from the corner. Chased down his own miss. Gives another opportunity. See Bancroft comes up the loose ball. A little spark off the bench. Done penetration and kick. Tyler Harris splashes it through corner pocket. Bancroft was a guy who was a walk-on, earned a scholarship with the team, now getting minutes and has very crucial of stretches in this contest. With Cotton struggling, Harris has helped pick up the slack, 5 for 11, 12 points. Just what Ed Cooley was looking for, he needs somebody to give his team a spark, and number 22, Bancroft provided it. See if they get the flame burning a little brighter as they had to come out of the zone now. You're going to see some full court pressure by the Friars. You see it right on your screen, a 9-0 run to turn a 16-point game into seven. And now Vanderbilt turning it over again. Parker's inbounded ball, and McClellan steps on the line, and Aaron pass. And all of a sudden, the sense of urgency for Kevin Stallings' team. And momentum swinging a little bit. Let's see if the Friars can take advantage of it as Vanderbilt stays in that zone, hands up high. Cotton in the corner, Henton for three, no. Rebound, DeRosia grabs it, puts it up, draws the foul, and will get to the line, looking to pull Providence to within four. Carson DeRosia just worked the backside, smart move, go to the weak side, the ball shot out of the corner, you know it's gonna come over the rim. He fights for position, goes inside, scores the basket. Now an opportunity to get this game down to Four points. A great time for DeRosia to get his first two of the game. And six rebounds, playing tough underneath. Now can Vanderbilt hit, answer this pressure? The run's now 12-0 for Providence. Pressure in the backcourt. Odom in trouble, calling for a timeout. Boy, this game has turned in a hurry, Kevin. Vanderbilt had control here in the whole second half. Start off on fire. But Ed Cooley goes to his bench to a walk on her scholarship. Made a huge play to turn this game around. There's the trap. It's the timeout before the five second call. And you see exactly what Providence is doing, trapping Odom in the corner, forcing Vanderbilt to burn a timeout. And there's the defense that Providence was hoping to play in the beginning, but better late than never, as they say. It's and I have to correct myself, there is no five second call in the backcourt, but there is the 10 second call, another new rule. You will not see the officials counting nope. on the 10 second. They're gonna look at the shot clock and go by that this season. That points off turnovers, that's been a crucial stat to Providence. Scoring 20 points off of 15 Vanderbilt turnovers. Dunn and Cott, pressure up front. Ball invented by Siak, and he has it in the backcourt to Fuller. And now they disperse with 5.20 to go. Kevin Sullins brings Fuller in the game to give himself another ball hander.
Odom underneath. Here's Jones. Damian Jones, the jump hook not there. Chasing after the rebound is done. Wrestles it away. Vanderbilt, can they get another one? Cotton, yes! He's been quiet most of the game, but Bryce Cotton comes up huge for the promise team, and this allows Promise to stay in the zone because he's been able to close the gap so quickly. It's like the Dunkin' Donuts Center in here with the amount of Providence folks now standing and cheering. 15-0 run, Jones. And it'll be back to Providence, and look at this, a chance to perhaps take the lead in a game that looked like it was turning into a Vanderbilt route. No field goals for the Commodores in over six minutes of this one. Devin Stallings trying to settle his team down. Now you have to do it at the defense end. We talked about Ed Cooley and his team have to make multiple defensive stops. They've done that. Now Vanderbilt has to make a stop. Listen to the crowd here in the Virgin Islands. Henton for three. No, rolls off. And it's a one-point game, Vanderbilt basketball, and this one's turning into the gym that we expected it to be. Well, hitting with a good look, but you would have think, let's keep attacking the interior of Vanderbilt's defense and force the officials to make calls. Probably staying in the zone. They've had some great ball movement here by Vanderbilt. It gets a little tighter now as this game gets tight. Here's Jones trying to power it home, but he's fouled going up. And DeRosia whistled for the contact. Well, we've got an exciting one for you, folks. Don't miss the finish. 3.53 to go. Moments ago, it was a 16-point game, just a one-point game here on the CBS. Vanderbilt leading by just the point. You know, the Virgin Islands, Kevin, was once a haven for Pirates. Providence talking about plundering. They're about to plunder back the lead. And Chris Dunn leading the charge is He's making some great plays. Delivers one to Harris, and now a little more drill penetration. And finds Harris again in the deep corner. Garosha just goes to work inside. Great rebound position, completes a three-point play. And again, Dunn delivering to Bryce Cotton, who's been quiet most of this game, but coming to life when the Friars need him most. Friars trying to keep their unblemished start to the season alive and trying to go 5-0 for the first time since the 90-91 campaign. They'll be heading to the opposite foul line, though. Some free throws coming for Vanderbilt. Yeah, no field goals in the last 6:48. Last field goal for Vanderbilt was at 10:41, a layup by Fuller. And since then, they have gone dry. And Jones just a 58% free throw shooter this season. A freshman from big ones. And then averaging 12, has only three points. Misses the free throw, and now we'll go down to Monica John again. What do you got, Monica? Guys, we heard McClellan talk about it at the half, blowing a lead. Coach Stalling telling his team in the huddle, it's not going to be easy. Do not expect it to be easy. Expect them to play man-to-man -man defense going forward. He's looking for them to rebound and pick up the intensity and keep this lead. Guys. Thanks, Monica. Just got a little harder for Vanderbilt, missing two crucial free throws. And the freshman, Jones, not able to convert, and now the Friars with an opportunity to take the lead. Vanderbilt led by 16 at 56. 40. They've not scored since. Here's Dunn, eight on the shot clock. Drops it off to Cotton. The Big East leading scorer from a year ago does it again. A little weave outside to get a mismatch, and Cotton finds the gap and rings up the Cotton. Hmm. A 17 nothing push from Providence. How does Vanderbilt answer here with only three minutes to go? Well, Jones working inside. He was open, looking for the lob. On the wing, Odom's got the answer in the form of three. Odom has been outstanding today. Four or five from the arc, 14 points. Providence basketball now down again. Done to the cup. Gives it up to Rosa, who throws it down with love from Wyndham, New Hampshire. And they coolly talk about the infectious personality of Chris Dunn, and he has made play after play in this comeback for the Providence Fires.
Friars. Odom again, pulls the trigger but can't get it to go. Battle for the boards goes to Dunn. Two minutes and change to go. Dunn looking to the sideline to Ed Cooley for direction. Garoja out of options goes to Henton. And Cotton will reshuffle the deck. Cotton off the screen, he's got Henton. In the corner, the drive to the hoop, and it goes! Great misdirection play by Providence. Screen up top, run it back to the weak side, open up a driving lane for Hinton. He takes advantage, the left-hander on the left side of the court. 21-3 run continues for Providence. Take away by Dunn, it's off of the track meet, has McClellan beat and puts it in. And Cooley told me he was the best defender in the Big East. And he might be right after that huge steal and conversion. McClellan on his way to the hoop, puts it up, loses the handle on it. It's a scrum, Odom for three, no. And Henton has it with under a minute to go. Providence trying to take away what seemed like an improbable victory just about 10 minutes ago. And Hinton, you call him the junkyard dog. He worked for that rebound and now the Friars a chance to work the clock down. Cotton a step inside midcourt. Defense by Parker, blows by Parker. Eight on the shot clock, here's Harris. Caught in the move to the hoop, off glass, put up and in by Hinton. Hinton made huge plays at both ends of the court for the Friars and Stallings now needs the timeout. Timeout, Vanderbilt, Providence 65, Vanderbilt 59, 21 and a half seconds to go. And what was a game in favor of Vanderbilt, 56 to 40, a 25-3 run. Let's take a look at tonight's brilliant play of the game, brought to you by Marriott Frenchman's Reef. Marriott is making travel more brilliant, one idea at a time. And Kevin, well, look at this. The Harris three all started it. He did it. Harris with 15 points. Dunn delivers. Harris with an open look off that loose ball rebound. Corner pocket splashes the twine. But it all started with Bancroft. The walk on got his own missed shot. Gave Providence an extra possession. And Harris makes Vanderbilt pay. And remember in the first half when they were 2 of 15 from three point range, they've only saw, shot six threes in the second half. They've made three of those six, but they've gone to the basket so often. You can see Kevin Stalling certainly a different complexion, a different face than we saw in the first half. Now with 21 seconds left, look for him to go for a three. McClellan goes up and gets fouled, and yes, it was three free throws. He was behind the lines so of three free throws coming the way well, of the Tulsa transfer, and that's not what Providence wanted at all. Worst possible situation for Providence to foul a three-point shooter because it stops the clock and gives McClellan a chance to make this a one-possession game. If Vanderbilt can make a stop, they will have to foul here if they do not steal the inbounds pass. McClellan with 12 points. Odom, the team high score was 17, and he can't make it. And that look about sums it up for Kevin Stallings, team. The second of three for McClellan. Well, Eric came in only a 62% free throw shooter. Well, Vanderbilt shell-shocked by this huge comeback. He's not able to even convert the free throws now, but what a barrage of points by the Providence Fire, Friars. And Ed Cooley, that timeout was crucial. So he got the attention of his team. Caught in the backcourt, and he's shoved down. Wow, a hard foul by Parker. 
It's a five-point game. Cotton, not the guy you want to put the free throw line, a 89% shooter. As we talked about, this is where Providence has excelled, one of the areas, 82% coming into the game. Number one among all the Big East teams entering play. Ted Bancroft will re-enter for DeRosia. As Ed Kuzung with a smaller defensive lineup to take away the three ball. Cotton with a chance to make this a three possession game. Vanderbilt still with a pair of timeouts in this game. Cotton nails the free throw. He makes one more and it's a three possession game. Cotton one of four and double figures. He now has 14 points tonight. And some pressure by Providence. Eat some time off the clock. Siakam has it. Keep and the ball look at three-point shooters. Fuller shoots the three, can't get the three to go. Ball batted around, out of bounds, and clenching the victory from the jaws of defeat. Ed Cooley's Providence Friars are three seconds away from their first 5-0 start since 1990. And that'll do it. Wow, what a stunner. And the Virgin Islands, Vanderbilt, was up 56-40. You see the final score, a 27-4 run. And Vanderbilt run right out of the building, Kevin. Well, what a change of events. And I go back to that timeout by Ed Cooley where he told his team, stick with it, got their confidence back, got their heads up. And Chris Dunn, second game back from that sh shoulder surgery or shoulder injury, Great performance by that young man. He really sparked this comeback by Providence. And we were talking about in the first half, Providence struggling, Vanderbilt playing great defense, but things change in the second half. And it looks like Monica Jonigan talking to one of the stars for the Friars, and she's got Tyler Harris, one of the big guys. Monica. Harris, that huge shot from the corner sparked the intensity that your team needed. Talk about your climb back into this game and the victory. Well, we just didn't give up. We was out there. We competed all the way through. We knew we was down, but we needed to get back in there and fight. And we did that in that second half, and that's what got us back in there. When you guys were down, Coach Cooley was in the uh, halftime firing you guys up, saying you need to play with more intensity. What did you guys do to get together and take that message to the court? Uh, we just made shots in the second half, and we played a lot better defense. And our shots, our shots in the first half was a fall, but in that second half, we was knocking them down, which helped us a lot. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thanks, Monica. Tyler Harris, but what a star in this game, a star among many for Providence, Kevin. Well, no question. And Cotton with a huge second half. We talked about the contributions by Chris Dunn at the defensive end. And also, we just saw the star there. Tyler Harris with that huge three ball out of the corner to spark that comeback by the Providence Friars. Well, Providence is victorious, and we'll see the bracket that develops for Sunday here on CBS Sports Network. You already saw Maryland beat Marist. They advance to play Northern Iowa beginning at 7 Eastern time. Providence will take on the winner between LaSalle and Morgan State. And LaSalle, a very experienced team, which made the Sweet 16 run a year ago and bring, hoping to meet up with Providence. And bring back a number of starters off that team for LaSalle. That will be a, a huge mountain to climb for Morgan State because LaSalle, as you mentioned, very experienced squad out of the, the Atlantic 10 Conference. A very much action-packed couple of games we got here on CBS Sports Network. Some final thoughts, Kevin. We've had some great basketball yeah. here today. It's been as good as the weather outside. <laughs> Not quite as beautiful, but great basketball nonetheless. Here, here. So for Kevin Lehman, Monica Jonigan, and our entire fantastic crew, this is Danny Lee saying so long and reminding you for scores, highlights, features, and more, go to cbssports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, a 24-hour home of CBS Sports. So long from the Virgin Islands, folks. We'll talk to you on Sunday.